Hey everyone, I wanted to show you a necklace that I made. I've been talking for quite a while that I wanted to do some kind of jewelry and I finally got around to doing it. This is made of polymer clay and I used some scrap clay to make these beads right here and these beads. Um, the, the brown is from umber and I used just solid brown but there's seed beads also in between to kind of space everything apart, which are glass beads. I didn't make those. But I made some matching earrings and everything. I think it looks really, really cool. I mean, from my first try at doing jewelry. Here's a nice close-up of uh, one of the earrings. You can see how the um, mixed clay, it just gives me this like marble look. And here's a close-up of the first three beads of the necklace. I did all of them pretty much in the same manner which I'm going to show you in this film. The first part of the film is in regular time and then the second part is in time lapse. But this is to give you a little glimpse on how I did this. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. So let's get started. Okay, to do this I, I used um, some scrap clay that I had. I mixed it up into like a log and it made some really really neat textures and swirls and stuff in there. So uh, after I was done, I just cut them into slices, and this right here I'm using for the core, which will be inside each bead. That way I'm sure I have enough to do all of it, and this is what I make with, with this stuff, one of these beads right here. And here's the, um, the main bead at the very bottom. I used the same method. Here's the scrap clay that I used to make it. Once you start making beads, um, I just drew like a diagram on the on the uh, desk and covered it with wax paper so I can kind of like build to it and I was left over with two different size beads so I decided to make some some new ones and fortunately that's where you get to see me make it uh, starting off I just wanted to make some some new cores to make even pieces so they match on both sides of the necklace. Just do it like this. Cut you a log in half and then make your cut on both pieces evenly. That'll generally be the same amount of clay uh, for each for each bead. And if you want to do like where the beads gradually get larger or smaller, just cut you know accordingly. If you want it to get a little bit larger, then make the lengths a little bit longer. I do recommend doing all of your core pieces first before you start covering it. And then I just roll them up into balls to get them started. And then give them the basic shape of what I wanted. And in this case it was some kind of oval look. I'm using my tissue slicer, cane or clay slicer, or whatever you want to call it. And try to cut two even thickness pieces. Now when you open them up where that was actually cut, the, pe the images will be identical, but on the other side they won't be, if you notice. So you want to put your bead on the back side, the side right here. That way the side that's, that match are the ones that are shown. So I just place it on the back and I just kind of wrap it around now this doesn't really, it didn't really come all the way around to the other side. So what I did, I just kind of pulled on it to get it to reach around there. I mean, it, it pretty much did uh, just fine. But you could also cut like two slices and use one on one side and one on the other. Sort of like a top, bottom layer, pancake style or whatever. And just cut the, the trim off. I don't know how that would look, but um, by doing it this way, one side's the good side, basically. Like this side right here is the good side. You can see the texture and all the little swirls and stuff I got. And the other side's a little darker. So it does have a, like a, a favored side as far as how the necklace should be worn. But this is just my first time doing this. Um, if I was going to do this again, which I most likely will be making more jewelry. Uh, I, I want to do a cane 
an actual a real cane, not just a scrap clay cane, but some kind of image I make or like maybe a flower or whatever. That way when I cut the slices, they're, they're, it's the same on both sides and it'd be really easy to just cut them in decent thicknesses and run some uh, wire through it to bake. But here I just made another one at a little distance. And you can see how they're very similar in, in design. It's because when you cut when you cut your clay, wherever the cut is, like right there, if I open it up like a book on that page, so to speak, both pages will be identical. Here's another example. Those are identical images. So once again, I just do the back side of them. I put the core in there and wrap it around. Slowly making uh, enough beads to give me enough necklace to work with. It, it totally blows my mind how I came up with something that looks really, really nice. I mean, I already showed this to a few people, like in my family and everything. They really, really like it. They think it's very pretty and everything. Uh, but I made it with junk clay. So that's what, it's like an, almost an irony. I really, I really like doing this. This was really fun. Um, I made these brown pieces of clay to kind of like space the candy beads. I call them candy beads. I don't know if that's what you would call them, but they look like candy. And you can see how I'm basically um, laying it all out to see how much necklace I have. Now keep in mind, there's going to be like two to three seed beads in between those, all the all the clay beads right there so it's actually longer and to make my earrings I use these eye pins and paying attention to other people and you know watching their videos and stuff I've learned that you tip you bend the tip a little bit like that that way when you you go to stick it in like this when you slide it all the way in there and then slightly turn it it's almost like a key. It won't come out. Pretty much it won't come out. You, you don't want your jewelry to fall apart or whatever it is you're making, like a charm or whatever. It's really good to bend the tip. And on this other part, I just, I let the one piece is long so I can bend them after they're baked. But that's the general layout of the earrings. Now I'm skewering these clay beads with my um, galvanized wire. I'm not sure if this is the best way to go about doing it, but it's how I saw to do it. And a lot of this is just doing things that make sense to you. So once I put um, all these on here, they're basically ready to be baked. And I just baked them on a sheet pan uh, with three sheets of wax paper in between the steel and the clay to keep the excessive heat off the pan to you know reach in the beads and if you noticed I'm actually putting one C bead in between all these clay beads and I'm giving it a little squish squishing them together the reason I did this is because it puts a little indention on you know where where the string runs through it where these these are going to be the seed beads to go on it. Actually, I didn't use black. I used silver and bronze. But the point is, since there's a little indention in there, they rest easy and it looks a lot more natural. So here they are. They're ready to go into the oven. And I wanted to show you an image of how I hung it up and, and painted them with shellac. I really appreciate y'all for checking this out. It was really, really fun to make this. I have no idea if y'all are going to like this or not, but it was very fun. Uh, for me to do and I found it one of the things I really like to do with polymer clay. Thank you for watching and I'll see you here again soon.